Thank God for another service, and God is here to bless us. Um, we are going to sing 276, and uh, we'll sing it together with 507. So we want the orchestra to open the two yeah. together. How was it was in Sinabon.
85, Rise the Children of Salvation. And uh, we'll open that together along with 497. 497. So we take um, two verses from 485, and then we go to 497. And when we're in 497, I will give us a signal for us to rise up. We're taking the first three verses in 497, and we'll sing it standing up. At the end of the last verse, the third verse, we'll remain standing, and thereafter we shall be led in prayer. Rise, it should red. Rise, it
glorious is thy name, O Lord. I know even with a thousand tongues, we cannot express who you are. For you are the mighty God. You are the everlasting Father. You are the Prince of Peace. You are our Savior. We thank you for this place where we can come even as sinners and confess our sins. And with your love in pardon, you can save us. Lord, for this, accept our thanks. We thank you because even those of old who stood in this place and prayed, oh Lord, forgive me, you forgave them. And now we can join and follow in their train. For this, oh Lord, we say we are grateful. We thank you because we can join those conquerors to say that we are more than conquerors. That we are overcomers of this world. Father, you have brought us, oh Lord, once again to make us that overcomers. During the week, during the month, we may have been overtaken by sin. And that's why we are here, to be refined in you. Oh Lord, accept our thanks. We thank you for the many blessings you've showered right in Portland, Oregon, USA. We thank you because you're the same God that is here. For you have assured us that where two or three are gathered in your name, you are in our midst. In that faith we come and commit, Lord, this service into your mighty hand. We pray for your unction upon the preacher that as your word will come forth, Lord, our circumstances will be altered in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for your word today, that word that is quick and sharp than any two-edged sword, that it will pierce our hearts. It will render sins powerless and will make us victorious. Lord, do it today. We want to leave this place with the assurance of faith that we have met you, the great transformer. Lord, do it in our lives. Bless us, O God, and make us a blessing. We pray in Jesus' name. my soul may hear. Speak to my heart, Lord Jesus. Calm every doubt and Speak to my heart, 
Scripture reading this morning, we'll be looking into the book of Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 1 to 7. Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 1 to 7. Ephesians chapter 4, 1 to 7. 1. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, Beseech you that ye work, walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. Two, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Three, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Four, there is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. Five, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. Seven, the last verse. But unto every one of us is given grace, according to the measure of the gift of Christ. He giveth more grace when the burdens grow greater. He sendeth more strength when the Triumphs, he multiplies. 
Let's open to the Bible reading we just had, the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, which we all read together. Ephesians 4, and I will take the first verse. This is going to be the main text for this message. Others may come in, but this is the main direction of this message. Verse 1. I therefore, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. Worthy to be qualified, to be eligible, to be acceptable on this calling that God has given unto us. Worthy. Just of uh, recent, in the past 14 months, I've been having experience of uh, maintaining a good car so that you can enjoy your trips. Long before then, I don't travel a lot, just to my work, which could be about 10 or 15 minutes drive, and that's it. But recently, I've been traveling over 172 miles every weekend. And many times, I will have a flat tire on the way. And I know that I have to make it. I have to continue my journey. And for me, I don't like to get stranded, calling the AA to come and help me, unless or less when it comes to the way I can just help. I will do everything to make sure I move that vehicle closer home. And recently, I had a flat tire. And I was thinking, OK, that, that's not a problem. I can easily do this. I got everything ready, but then to bring my spare tire out of the car took me two and a half hours. I was struggling. I have to get this thing out. It is the same men like me who would do this in five minutes. So I keep on struggling. I keep on doing it. I keep on pressing. I will take the manual again. I will check it again. I'm going back. I have to go back. I'm not going to stay on the road. I'm not going to sleep here. I must go. And eventually, with prayers, of course, I just pressed something, and then the tire just fell off. Amen. God is wonderful. Amen. The point is I was determined. I am going. When some people have a breakdown, they just stay there, the phone, and they stand in the bush and waiting and waiting endlessly. I can't do that unless when I can really help it. I was determined, I must go home. I can't stay here all alone. And somehow I would pray. I go just, make me to talk. It's like I was, oh, God. And then the tire just fell off. And then I got my tire and then I fixed it up. And then I just keep on singing praises to God as I was going home. This makes me to realize that it's always good to do a good service of your car. You know, yearly we do MOT. Some of us would do it because it's the law. If you don't do MOT, you don't get insurance for your car. But the service, the light is not working, oh, I'll do that later on. The brake is failing, oh, I'll do that later on. If you are a traveler, you can't suspend anything. When something is wrong with your car, you want to get it fixed. Every time in the morning before I go out, I kick my tire to see that it's well fixed. The reason is that I work with children and they can lose the tire. And you think it's okay, you're just going. Then you hear the sound that something is wrong. And if you don't stop immediately to correct it, before you know it, the tire will go a different way, and you are going a different way. So maintenance of car becomes so paramount to me, and I realize the value of doing your MOT regularly and doing your service regularly. I was there, I thought everything was okay, and luckily I kicked the tire, and the nut just fell off. And the tire nearly just go away because in the school, children are playing with the uh, nuts and they have lost it. I don't need to blame anybody. I just need to be observant myself. I got it tightened up, and then I start my journey. To be worthy, we need to maintain our spiritual life. Amen. The word MOT, in my head, I was thinking it's like motor something something. It's actually Ministry of Transport, MOT. It's an organization that ensures that you have a safe vehicle on the road, and your vehicle is roadworthy, and the exhaust emissions is reduced so that you don't pollute the air. So they're actually an organization 
So when people say, have you done your MOT? I used to think, have you done the maintenance of your, I was wondering, what's it all about? But rather it's an organization. Now, in this context, you and I, you are a spirit. You have a body and you have a mind. The body and mind are the vehicle. The spirit of the Lord God is the driver. Therefore, spiritual transformation is the process of upgrading one's ability to navigate through the obstacles of life while maintaining inner peace. We are all very cool, and we have to keep moving. Sure. The day you think you cannot move, the day you break down, that's the day the devil will rejoice over you. God forbid. Amen. The devil will not rejoice over us. Amen. But the Bible says the gate of hell shall not prevail over his church. You are the church, yeah. not this building. It's you and I. And the gate of hell shall never prevail over us. Amen. When you are sad, let me tell you the secret. The devil is laughing. He's giggling. I got him. I got her. May you not be sad. Amen. Life is full of obstacles. But we have to maintain the inner peace. We have to smile all the time. Yeah, our elder says the bush is burning, but something is not consumed. The tree are not consumed. The bush is really burning, the fire is going on, but the grasses are still there. That is life. If you carry your own burden on your head, you're going to be so sad, and the devil will be rejoicing. May the devil not rejoice over you. Amen. May the devil not rejoice over me. Amen. The maintenance of a car, if you are, some people buy their car for pleasure. I got my own car for my job. I can't do anything actually without the car. I need to move around with the car. And with the car, it make it easy for me. A long distance, I'll be there in a short while. I don't need to really run too much. I just need to know the shortcut. And then I'm there. Many a times, I would think, okay, let me go through the train. But when I calculate the time for the train and buses, and the time for the car, I see that with my car, it's even shorter and easier for me, so I go with the car. So I didn't get my own car for pleasure. And that is why I realized that it's so important to maintain it. Every morning when I start the engine, I listen to every sound around my car. I want to know if there was a time a can, a tin can, an empty can was standing on a coin. And as I started the car, it was knocking. I was wondering, what is that? I need to find out. So I quickly find out and I discover, oh, it is this can. I took it away, took the coin away. You don't disturb. I listen again. So as I drive, I listen to the sound of my car. If anything goes wrong, I don't want to wait too long. I will stop immediately. Keep the engine on and make sure that the sound is the normal one. The engine is okay. The oil is okay. I check the dashboard. Everything is fine. Then in the name of Jesus, I'm going. So also in the spiritual sense, we need to check our vehicle. When you mistakenly lie, uh -huh, check it. Lie cannot just come from your mouth like that. That's not a mistake. Something is wrong with your vehicle. You need to quickly check. Your, you need some service. You need a service there. That little lie, you just lie. You need a service. If you don't service it on time, you will lie more and lie more and lie more in order to cover the lies. And you become liars like the fathers of lie, which is the devil. So, the point is, when our vehicle has a problem or we need a service or MOT, we need to take it to somewhere called garage. And where is our own garage? The house of God. Amen. This church is the spiritual garage. Yes, yes. Many will take their vehicle to the automobile garage and they'll take it back. They can't do it because they don't have the money. And they keep on managing until the vehicle gets wrecked and they can't use it again. If I take my own to the garage and I know I don't have the money, I will leave it there. I will manage it. Because I know managing the vehicle is the death. I won't, I won't take it. I will just leave it until... I can tell them, okay, maybe I'll go on direct debit or installment payment. I make sure the car is serviced and is worthy for the road before I take it out. So also you and myself, we have come to the house of God. If your vehicle is wrecked, you need to service it. Don't take it home managed. Because you can't manage it, you will do more havoc to yourself. When you bring your vehicle to the house of God, the spiritual garage, 
before the mechanic, the engineer, that Lord God Almighty, diagnose your problem, begin to figure out what is wrong with your own vehicle. Am I a liar? Am I a busybody? Do I spoil people in their back? Do I fake things? Do I do the right thing? Is my salvation really there? Am I praying always? Have I read my Bible as I need to? You diagnose yourself first. Then after you've done that, present the rest for the engineer, the Lord God, to now diagnose your body, your system, and see what is wrong there. And God is able to repair it. Most of the time when my vehicle is bad, I like it done quickly. And to the producer of my, my, my own car, when I go there, they always give me two weeks. Every time, no matter what, even for diagnosis, they will say, come next week. And then for repair, they'll give me an appointment for two weeks. I say, this is poor. So I have to go for quick fit. When I get there, immediately they diagnose the car for me. Immediately they tell me what is wrong. Immediately they say, if you want to do it today, they can do it for me. So also is the garage of God. He is ready to quick fit us. Amen. Why? Because we have a journey to go. And we must be roadworthy. If you are not roadworthy, if your vehicle will wreck on the way, you won't make the journey to heaven. We have a journey to go. We have to get ourselves serviced. We have to be on the way. We have to be safe on this journey. One of the things that the MOT does is the exhaust emissions, the pollutions of the air. That's a minimal expectations of the vehicles exhaust into the air. When it is too much, it brings disease into the people. When you discover that your mouth is too loud, your exhaust is broken. Your mouth is just yap, 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 yap. You never stop. It's yap, yap, yap. The more you talk, you make a mistake. Your exhaust is already broken. And if it is not repair on time, you're going to pollute everybody. And it's not going to be safe for everybody. So if you notice that you're exhaust, you know some people talk, they don't know why they talk. Because I want with the young people, when they do something, I say, why? I don't know. And honestly, they don't know. If that happens to you as a spiritual person, a Christian, you talk anyhow, and you, you got and you don't know why you spoke like that. Ah, your exhaust is already broken. You need a maintenance. You need to go for quick MOT or immediate service. You don't need a postponement. Yeah, okay, today is Monday, right? On Sunday when I get to church, ah, that is not safe. You need a quick fit. You don't need to wait for that long, long, long time. When is the MOT for a, a vehicle due? As we all know, it's yearly. Because if you don't do it, you don't get your license. But how about the service? Service, the service of your car, depends on uh, how you use it. You may do your own service yearly or two, 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 two years or three, three years, depends on how you use it. Like me, who use my vehicle mode, a time is within six months, I have to service it again. A time within three months, I have to do the service again. Because I've covered the thousands of mileage I'm expected to cover. So I need a service so that it's going. When is your own spiritual service due? Ephesians chapter 4. When is your own service due? When are you due for MOT? Ephesians 4, 31 and 32. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind went to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. If you are bitter, your service is due. If you are always angry, your service is due. If you are uncontrollable when you are disappointed, your service is due. If you speak evil too often, your service is due. If you are involved with malice, speaking bad about people, your service is due. Mm. Ah, let us pray for Sister Janet. You know, she's been going, you are not really requesting for prayer. You are busybody. Mm. When you are doing that, your service is due. When you are no longer kind, 
Everything is me, 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 me. It's just me. It's just me. Somebody asked for me a penny, I mean a pound. And I look at my pocket, there was no coins. And I said, oh, I'm so sorry, I don't actually have anything. And he said to me, okay, I have 50p to give you. <gasps> I thought he's in a need. He's asking for a pan. And because I didn't have coins, and I said, sorry, I don't have coins, he thought I'm no worse than himself. <laughs> and he's going to give me a 50p. Brother, let's look at this. You might think your story is terrible. Somebody is more terrible than yours. But when you are kind, you will now discover that, wow, you are better off. When you are kind, you are ready to share the last thing, the last loaf of bread you have. When you are no more kind, everything is just me. Everything is just me. Everything. Me, me, me. I need this. You don't think of others who are struggling, who are not finding things easy. If you don't have financial support to them, pray with all your mind and heart for them that God will help them. Amen. Reflect back your prayer request. Is it just me? God, be me? God, give me this. God, give me. God, this. this uh, God, me. God, this. God, remember me. Uh, me. Just me. Oh, God. Me, me, me. Me. On Monday, me. Tuesday, Wednesday, me. Wednesday, Thursday, me. Friday, Saturday, me. On Sunday now, God, me, me, me. Remember others. Be kind-hearted. Turn that kindness to other people. You don't have the money, pray for them. Oh, I see my sister today. My heart bleeds. May God make a way for her. She may not know, he may not know, but God knows. And God will make a way. When your previous grace expires, when you have lost your salvation, your MOT is due, your service is due. When your patience expires, People say, you have exhausted my patience now. I can't take it anymore. Mm. When that happens, you need the service. You need a re-oiling of your own vehicle. Mm. When you discover that anger just emanates anyhow, you just, uh, you need a service. Mm. Your vehicle is due for service. When you always have a feeling to take a revenge. Mm. You did, did, that was too bad when they treated me. No, I can't take it. Ah, uh, no, I have to do something. You need a service. Because the Bible said, vengeance is? God will avenge for you. If they cheated you, if they treated you badly, God knows. You are a child of God. He will fight for you. He treated Joshua, Joseph in the Bible, badly, his brothers. They threw him into the pit. They sold him to slave trade. Even in the land where he was a slave, he was maltreated, thrown into the prison. We've never read one time he wanted to fight back. Right in the prison, he was even looking for a way out, not to fight back. When he even came out, the people who hurt him, he was thinking of how he can help them. But if your own case is, no, I can't take that, no, no, no. I'm, not, I'm a Christian, I'm not a fool. No, 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 no. Then you need a service. Your faith is already wrecked. If you don't do the service on time, you will kill. God wants us to do our MOT, not only yearly, every time. And the service of our car, our spiritual car, every moment you notice something is wrong. Verse 2 of our main text, Ephesians 4. With loneliness and meekness, with long suffering, Forbearing one another in love. The Bible says love without dissimulation. Somebody you love, you don't want to hurt him or her. When you love brethren, you, you want to do everything to help them. Most of the time when I'm in, in my class, especially the, uh, the grown-up one in the colleges, they like this word, I don't like him, I don't want to talk to him anymore. And I say, look, look, look. This word, you can't live alone. You don't like this one. Tomorrow you don't like that one. And then you don't like, who are you going to live with? You live alone. Don't say, no, I don't take it that way. That's what it means. If today now you don't like me, tomorrow you don't like him, you don't like her, who are you going to like? It's better we like everybody. Because the Bible said the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. God loves everybody. So you too, if you hate somebody, you need service. 
your vehicle needs service. If there's anybody in this gathering that you hate, if there's anybody in this gathering or anywhere you are looking at me, in your house, that somebody you don't like, you don't want to see him or her, your service is due. Actually, overdue. Your service is overdue. First three of our main texts, Ephesians 4. And therefore, in, to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. When I was little, in my minor age, and I hear the sermon that Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming, I used to wonder, what does that mean? How would they come? I mean, I have a little brother. Is he going to grow? I am still growing. So what does this mean? How can Jesus come? My father is old. Okay, maybe that one is going to die, but not me. It was later I understand that, you know, we can die at any time. I was only 19 when my brother at 21 died. He was not sick. He was just reading the word of God. That very night, he said to me, he want to read all the tracts of apostolic faith. And I said to him, what's wrong with you? You can read tomorrow now. He said, no, tonight I'm going to read. I used to have a file with all the apostolic faith tracts. I left it in Africa now. So he started reading them. He started reading them. It was 3 a.m. I had him coming to lie down beside me on the bed and just he breathed. <sighs> and that was it. He wasn't sick. It was then I realized that, okay, Jesus is called me means that you can die. He might come and take all of us together, but he might take us one by one. So he can take up the young one away. I have a plan. I want to build a house. I want to buy a car. I want to marry. I want to have children. I want to do this. And Jesus said, come on. It's okay now. Come on. And he take your soul. You can't tell him, sorry, I haven't finished my project. So this is why we have to be ready. This is how we have to maintain our spiritual vehicle. This is why we have to maintain our journey to heaven. Every time in apostolic faith, salvation. Why? They don't know anything more than salvation. Because that's the, the beginning, the start point to be on this journey. So that you are ready. As you are planning to do this, to do that, you are ready. You are making yourself road worthy for this vocation that you are called. You are making yourself ready all the time. In the book of Romans 12, from verse 4 to 18, for, uh, he said, uh, For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. If you read on, you will see all about this body. So also, we have to maintain this body, okay? Our body, we have the eyes, we have the hands, we have the legs, we have all this one. If one of them, something is wrong with it, the whole body fails for it. Have you ever felt for anyone among the brethren who is in trouble? Have you ever felt it? Or you just say, okay, God will help you go. That's it, it's one of those things. But if it is your own body, let something cut your finger, from the air on your head, you will feel the shivering down to the nails on your toe. This is how we have to feel for ourselves. But you can't do that ordinarily unless you have maintained your spiritual vehicle, unless your salvation is solid, unless you are watching every time that there's no unnecessary noise with your spiritual vehicle. It is then you can realize that, ah, that brother was in trouble, that sister was in trouble, it's part of us. Let us pray, let us do something. Let us do something. You may not practically go to the person, but I bet if you really, really pray, God will really, really answer. Amen. That cannot just happen unless you are well serviced, unless your salvation is secured. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 10, he said, Wherefore the rather, 2 Peter 1, 10, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. Amen. When your vehicle, your car is serviced, you feel comfortable that, yeah, I can use this car now. You can drive confidently. There's no cause for you to, to worry. When you are saved, you will know it. When the Spirit of God is inside you, you will know. When you commit a sin, you will know. When you do something bad, you will know it. When you have the, mean, the motive to go and get things sorted, you will know that, yes, you are trying to work things out. 
When it is time to pray and you bring your body like a vehicle, God, come and give me full service. My head, my nose, my toes, my body, my spirit, full service. When God gives you the service, you will know. When you are saved, when you are sanctified, when the Holy Spirit of God is inside you, you will know. If you are, when you help somebody, you will know. When you are in the right, you will know. When you are ready to meet the rapture, you will know. When you are not ready, you will know. So if you are not ready, wake up and be ready. Don't park your car like that. Give it a good service. So that you are worthy for this journey. Don't think you can manage it. We have different gifts and we have different calling, according to Romans eleven twenty nine. And this, this gift that God gave us, there's no mistake in it. When you do your, mister, your, uh, your vehicle MOT, that is, you know that it's done. You'll be so sure that it's not like manage, manage. You sound the car, the engine will be okay. When God calls you, you will know he has called you. When he saves your soul, you will know he has saved your soul. And the calling of God, God does not make mistake. We human beings, we make mistakes, God doesn't. So when you give your life to Jesus, you will know, yes, I've given it to Jesus. Yeah. And God is in control. Yeah. When you purge yourself and wash yourself with the blood of Jesus, you will know it. So we don't need to deceive for ourselves. Somebody was asking me, how do you know you are saved? How do you pray through? I just said, that. how do you know when you eat food that your belly is full? Why don't you keep on eating without stopping? Just keep on eating. If your tummy will take it. I said, when you pray and God save your soul, you will know. And the day you lose that salvation, you will know. So, brethren, if you have lost your salvation, I think God is calling us. If your faith is overdue, I think let us not deceive ourselves. We need a service. Because we have to go on the journey. This journey, there's a lot of obstacles there, things that will make you sad, things that will make you cry, things that you feel so disappointed. Then don't carry everything on your head. Ah, my life. Listen to others, you will see that they have a lot to carry. And that is why, last year when I was in Kamit in Portland, a brother that I've seen for over 20 years, he came to me and he said, ah, you are still in this church? I said, what do you mean? He said, we told you that you are going through. I said, what am I going through? He said, yeah, that's the question. I see you every time. You, you just look happy. I said, so why not? Jesus saved my soul, that's more important. Uh -huh. That person, can you imagine, he's looking at my own problem. I am looking at Jesus. And my own problem is becoming a burden for him. And he's thinking if he has my own problem, he will not come to the church again. He's not the one who will have it all. But he's looking at me that, ah, this brother, the problem for him is too much. Old, and he's still going to church. Why wouldn't I? We are called, we have a journey to go. Yeah. I must not look at my problem. I must service my vehicle. If I open my mouth to be telling you, oh, this problem, that problem, you just wonder, are you able to sing? I am able to sing because I don't want the devil to laugh against me that he has won. He can never win. Amen. Jesus has given me that assurance. Yes. The devil will not win. Amen. I had a little case to attend to in my school. And then when people were talking, and then the person that we were talking to busted into tears. You know what they said? That means that person is guilty. He's into tears because he felt so disappointed. He felt that there's nothing he can do to help himself. When you are crying, that is what the devil feels, that you are guilty, he has got you. When you are sad, the devil feels that he has got you, you are guilty. But when you say no, if the problem comes like the flood of water, I shall rise. I shall rise. Amen. When you don't let the devil see that you are aware of your problem, then the devil will leave you alone. Yeah. Because he never stops. He's an aged, experienced, uh, wicked uh, enemy who has the God to face Jesus himself and tempt Jesus. How much more you? He will tempt you. He will tempt me. But let us remember we have a calling. God has saved our soul. Let us bear a good face face of salvation. Amen. Let us wear the crown that we are confident that this our God is able to take us through. Amen. No matter what is happening here, we shall make it. Amen. Brethren, Amen. 
since 1995 that I've been made a minister in this church and I've been preaching, I've never suffered like when I was preparing for this sermon. A whole week. I felt myself being nagged as if I wanted to feed somebody and they don't want me to feed the person. And every time I take up this topic and then I find myself being nagged, yesterday night in the mission house there I slept, I was struggling for an hour. It has never happened to me before. Which means somebody here, you are going through a terrible thing. Don't look at your problem. Jesus knows about it. And he will take you through. What you need to look at is your salvation. Is your salvation there? If it is there, God will help you. If you discover your vehicle is wrecked, go for the service. Repair everything. The, The Lord will never leave you. He will never forsake you. It will deliver you. Amen. But the duty you and I have to do today is to, as we are in the garage house now, yeah. don't take your vehicle back on service. Mm. Don't say you can't repair it today. Don't postpone. Mm. Bring it before God. Yeah. Put your own problem before him. You need a new service. Yeah. You need a new strength. For they that fear the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They will run, they shall not faint. They will walk and they shall not be weak. They shall not be weary. You will run. You will not faint. God will not make you faint. You will stand on your feet. The devil shall run for you. You will not run for the devil. You will be back to better. What you have been doing for the Lord. You will continue to do it. The devil will leave you alone. That which look impossible with God, all things are possible. Believe you me. I wouldn't want to take much of your time. Is your vehicle serviced? Are you overdue for service? Are you going to service your car now? Are you going to take it back home on service? Are you going to manage a wrecked vehicle? Or you want to repair it now? God wants us to do a maintenance, a pure maintenance. We will be singing and let us begin to do the service of our vehicle. And God will bless us. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We want you to be our mechanic today. As we go on our our knees to pray, come and be the MOT man for our hearts. Touch our hearts today, O Lord. Revive our souls and lead us in the right direction. For we pray in Jesus' name.